we were reading um, Augustine's Confessions, and there were two or three editions, and one of the students' editions was updated with chapter and verse that referred to the Bible as we know it today. And another one wasn't, and we started comparing what the differences were, and it was very clear that Augustine, when he was writing his famous con Confessions, was done before there was a collaborated, consistent Bible. And so some of his translations from the Hebrew are very, very awkward and very difficult. And then some translators of Augustine will go in and then update it to the version of the Vulgate. So Vulgate being Latin was the common language of the people at the time, the vulgar language, the people's language. Even so, it's you can't conceive of the Latin Vulgate Bible as a people's Bible because it was one of the earliest what's called a manuscript codex, and I have a picture up there. A codex is simply a book that's bound. The ancient Jewish scriptures were not bound. Many of them were completely were in the manuscripts and scrolls. So this is a book you can turn. This changes the way you think about things when you can turn a Bible. Uh, it also changes your way when you think about things, by the way, when you read on a Kindle. And I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but the format there makes a huge difference in how you perceive and remember what you're reading. So the movement to a codex was really significant. It also created an a easier way to transmit. Um, and the monasteries, which had developed by this time, were really important for for the whole codex culture of the Latin Vulgate Bible. That is, they sat down and they copied the things out very carefully. Um, monks spent hours and hours copying and recopying. But these were not for the people. Most of the people didn't read Latin. So th the Vulgate was very much, until the Middle Ages, a an instrument or kept cl closely within the church.